Hi, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the cylindrical joint in Autodesk Fusion 360. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my worm gear here and move it a little bit. And now I'm going to come over here to where it says joint, hit continue, and now my joint menu is going to come up. From here, what I can do is I can select this bottom edge and I can rotate my part a little bit in order to select the second component which has a tapped hole. So I'm going to select an edge of that tapped hole and once I select those two I'm going to select the uh, point that I want to use. So I'm going to select this point right here and if you're wondering what point that is it's the center point of both circles. So right now, my worm gear is constrained to the rest of my wrench. And it's giving me a bunch of different options here for alignment. So if I come here and I move this, you're going to see that offset Z kicks up to negative uh, half an inch. And likewise, if I move it to here, it's going to be 0.157. I can also move the worm gear with this arrow in this direction and that's going to offset it and you can move it in the X direction as well. So I'm going to set these to zero because the point that I selected which is the center point of the circles that center point is the exact point that I want my axis to lie on. So I can actually come here and click on animate and that's going to show the direction of the constraint. So you can see that it's actually moving in the direction I want it to. For axis, this is the axis of the direction of the constraint. So if I click on this and I choose x-axis, you're going to see that it's going to rotate along the x-axis. If you choose the y, it's going to rotate around the y. But I want to select the z-axis because that's the direction that my constraint that I want it to go in. So with that, I'm just going to hit OK. And now, if I try to rotate this, you're going to see that it's going to rotate accordingly. Now that's great. Another thing I can do is I can right click here and click on Edit Joint Limits. And under the Joint Limits, I could set a minimum and maximum. So for my degrees, I could set this to be minimum of zero and let's say about 70 degrees for my maximum. Now I can animate that. And you can see that it's only going to rotate that much. Now that's very helpful if I don't want this to rotate, you know, and continue to spin infinitely. I can also set this to be, let's say, 280 degrees. And that's going to rotate it a lot more. So I'm going to set this and hit OK. And from here, if I want, I can choose to come over to Joint and add one more constraint. What I want to do is I want to make these planar to each other. So I'm going to click on Planar. And if I rotate this, I can select this face right here. And I can rotate back and select the second face on Component 2. And with both of these selected, I just need to now select the point that I want to use. So I'm going to select uh, this point right here. And you're going to see that it can now move along that face. So let me rotate this a little bit. You can see that it can rotate on that face. And just like before, I can move this in different directions if I want. But the whole constraint, the whole scheme of the constraint is the fact that it, it's moving along this face. So I'm going to set these all to zero and I'm going to animate it one more time to see how it can move. So that's, that's along the lines of what we want. And now you're going to see that my worm gear is constrained exactly how I want it to be. It can't move up and down, but it can rotate based on the point 
and hole that we selected. So that's the, um, the first constraint that we did, or joint, was the cylindrical joint. And the second one is the planar joint. And so when you use these together, it can be very powerful. Uh, like and subscribe for more videos on modeling and engineering. Thank you.